It is good to be here with you today. I've known your pastor for a long time. He's my friend. Before we get into the word, let me, let me just say that one of the indications of good leadership is not what happens when the leader is present. It's, it's, it's what happens when the leader is away. If the children in the classroom behave when the teacher is in the classroom, that's no indication of how much control she has of the class. But, but if when she leaves the classroom, the children remain in their seat and quietly do their work, then you know, then you know, then you know, then you know. And so, so it is a testament to the leadership of Dr. Jules and Pastor Goff that in his absence, things still run smoothly. Somebody ought to put their hands together and give God a praise today. Now, we're going to look at the word. It is my custom in declaring the word to have everyone stand as we read God's word. My sermonic text is never, ever the same as the scripture reading. And though the pastors all the time ask me, Green, what's your scripture? I say, I have none. It's not always the truth, but it is what I tell them. Our sermonic text is taken from the book of John, chapter 1. John, the first chapter, beginning at verse 1. I'm not sure if they can get it on the monitors, but, but John is not a difficult book to find. The Bible declares this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. However, he was not that light. Oh, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and yet the world knew him not. Oh, he, he came unto his own, and his own received him not, but, oh, right there, right there, right there, but, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace 
and truth. I want you to look to your neighbor and simply say to him, he alone is able. No, no, say it with conviction and ebullience. Say it with excitement and energy. He, he alone is able. Not your pedigree. Not your education, the size of your bank account. Not your social affiliation, but, but he alone. Mm, I'm ready. He alone is able. Father God, speak to our hearts now, for you alone is able. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can I teach a little bit before we, before we shout? The can must be filled with something, otherwise it's just a rattling noise and a tingling cymbal. Something must be placed within. Don't shake the can while it's empty. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Understand that in order for anyone to fully appreciate content, you must know intent. I can't properly interpret content unless I know the intent. The why must be not. Oftentimes we are quick to judge based on the what we see. Informed understanding as to the why the what we see is. So we judge people based on what we see them do. Why they do what they do. So that mother goes into the grocery store and she steals a loaf of bread and we judge her based on what we see her do. Not because she's got five hungry mouths to feed and her action doesn't define her. Her action simply demonstrates the why she does what she does. This is critical to understand because if I don't know intent, then I'm going to misinterpret the content. Are you hearing me? As we now are moving into where we actually are in the month of December, the world as well as the church is moving into the time frame in which we recognize the birth of Christ. And whenever you talk about the birth of Christ, it brings you right into the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What's interesting is that even though all four give the good news of salvation, their purpose and intent is different. Mm. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke in theological circles are known as the synoptic gospels. Sin with optic vision. Matthew, Mark, and Luke have a similar intent as they declare the good news of the gospel. John, however, is not a part of the synoptic gospels because intent is different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you find a focus in which God is discovered. Mm. Uh, there is discovery of Jesus. There are the wise men. There are the shepherds. There are the angels. They are discovering the Christ. But John is not dealing with discovery. Are you hearing me? 
John doesn't, isn't concerned about a manger. He's not concerned about angels and singing. He's not concerned about genealogy. John is not concerned about the man God. He's concerned about the God man. Mm. And so John starts out from the very beginning. He says, this is not a man. This is God. He says, God in the beginning, God. He's not talking about a baby in a manger. He says, God. He puts God first. Or oh, somebody ought to hear me. Because it's not about discovering God. It's about God discovering. Oh, Jesus, I'm ready to preach this thing. So John says, God, in the beginning, if you put God, if you put God first, everything else falls into place. You don't have to seek and search when you put God first. But if you put other things first, you spend all your time seeking and searching and trying to find peace of mind. John says, start out with God and you get your peace of mind. And this is what he says. He says, in the beginning, God, are you hearing me? Oh, I wish I had a church who understood today. In the beginning, God. Now, in order for God to be in the beginning, he had to be before the beginning began. Otherwise, he couldn't be at the beginning where the beginning began. He had to be before. Otherwise, he couldn't be at. Now, this is critical to understand because God is always, 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 always. He's not just an on time God. He's a big, oh, he's a before. This is, this is in blending with his nature. He's omniscient, and since he's omniscient, there's nothing that comes to him after the fact. Oh, he's always before. So before he made the fish, he made the sea. Are you hearing me? Before he made the fish, he made the sea. Before he made the sky, he made the... Before he made the birds, he made the... Thank you, help me preach this. Mm, and before he made a tree, he, he made the earth. Watch this. Before there was ever a drop of sweat from the human brow, before there was ever flexing of your biceps and triceps, before you ever did one act of labor, he created the rest before the... Oh, my God. He created the rest before the rest was needed because he's a before that God. He gave us the Sabbath before it was even needed. I wish I had somebody who know that we need a before that God. Before the doctor came, news that you had cancer. Before that, God already had a bomb of healing. Before the boss on the job wanting to get rid of you, God already provided. Have you ever noticed how God, before you need him, will make your enemies your... your oh, 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 oh. And those who mean your harm end up doing your good. Joseph said, what you meant for... What you meant for, what you meant for, what you meant for evil, God, God meant it for my good. Because he's a before that God. Put your hands up and just praise him for being before. He's a way maker before you need the, before you need the way. He's a bridge over the troubled waters. Before the waters even stir. Because he's a before that God. So then, 
if you serve a before that God, why are you worrying? Why are you losing sleep? Trust, trust, trust. God's got this under control. I don't care what your situation, I don't care what you're going through. God already has a plan. Now, 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 let me just tell you something. You don't know how big the God is that you serve. Some of us, our God is too small. Are you hearing me? Some of us, our God is too small. And the devil is a liar. Here's what he does. If he can create a situation that is bigger than the God of your conceptualization. Oh, if he can create a situation that is bigger than your concept of God, he has you. But my God is bigger. My God is greater. My, oh, my God is. So there's no situation that the devil can create that my God isn't big enough to handle. So listen to me. Listen to me. When I pray, it is easy. And we always, when we are pressed in by situations and circumstances, to pray for deliverance. But more significant than the delivering out of is the preserving in. Oh, you, you got to catch this. It, it, it's easy to shout of the deliverance that God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. After 420 plus years of slavery, he delivered them out with a mighty hand. But the miracle is that he kept them for 400, oh, he kept them for 420 years. The miracle is in the preserving. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If God doesn't preserve, then there'll be nothing to deliver. Oh, so he's got to preserve. He's got to preserve so there's something to deliver from. Oh, oh, you should have lost your mind based on what you're going through, based on your heartache, based on the situation. But God has preserved you. You didn't lose your mind. He kept you in the right hand of his power. You should have turned your back and walked away from the church because of the things that people in the church said about you. While you but God kept you. You should have become discouraged and despondent. But God kept you. I don't know who I'm preaching to. God preserves before he delivers. So while you're going through, pray God help me to hold on. Keep me until you release me. Don't let me give up. Don't let me give in. Keep me. Somebody ought to just praise God for keeping you. Are you hearing me? It is not your intellectuality that kept you. It's not your educational standing or the size of your bank account. There are a lot of rich people who have lost their minds. There are a lot of rich people on drugs. There God has kept you. He preserves. Isn't it amazing how God in his preservational capacity will take your little check. Oh, your little nothingness. Your little check. And he, 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 he stretches it to preserve you. That's the God you serve. He's a preserver, not just a deliverer. He's kept your family. Not because you're more righteous and better than anybody else. He's a preserver. Are you hearing me? Am I preaching to anybody? Put your hands together to thank God for preserving you.
listen to me. And somebody may, get, may not like this. But let me tell you something. You're preserved not because of what you eat or don't eat. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Because there are a lot of folks who don't eat meat who are coming down with all kinds of... All, but God preserves you despite... Despite your ox tail curry goat eating self, he preserves you. Somebody ought to say amen. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for just being God. So John says, in the beginning God, and everything that follows, follows from that fundamental premise. Everything that follows, God is a substratum of everything that occurs. God is a substratum of the cross. He's a substratum of the cradle. Can I teach you something? You want to learn something? When God comes into something and there is nothing that God is not in. When I was growing up, they told me that if I went to the movies, God wouldn't be there with me. That's a lie. God doesn't stay outside the door. You run into Motel 6, God, God did it. David says, if I make my bed in hell, oh Jesus, if I make my bed in hell, even there. Listen, David, David wasn't planning just to visit hell. He wasn't planning just to visit. He made up the bed to stay. And when God showed up, David had to wake up, get up and get out. Whenever, whenever the supernatural enters into the natural, the natural can no longer remain natural. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> whenever, whenever the supernatural enters into the natural, the natural can no longer remain natural. Its course is altered. Are you hearing me? So there was a, there was a lion getting ready to eat up God's servant. God comes into the situation, changes the nature of the lion, and turned him from a carnivore to a vegetarian. Are you hearing me? Because whenever the supernatural comes in, the natural order has to change. It is no longer natural. It is. So they gave you only five years to live. That's the natural course of the cancer that is racking your body. God comes in and here you are 15, 20. Oh, Jesus. Because now, now the supernatural comes in. And when the supernatural comes in, the natural order has to change. So, so there's a Red Sea. And there's some children of God trying to get through. God gets in. The Red Sea and changes, changes the nature of the Red Sea and becomes a wall and a highway. When God come out of it, oh, when God stepped back out, the Bible says that Pharaoh's army was drowned because God was out. When God was in, it was dry ground. When God stepped out, the So listen to me, listen to me. If you're wondering why you're having so much trouble in your life. If you're wondering why your course is so rough. If you're wondering why you're having such a difficult time. It doesn't matter if you come through the door and raise your hand in praise. If you're having such difficulty, maybe God is not in. Are you hearing me? Because when God is in, 
when God is in, the natural consequences change. It's impossible. So Jesus is, is walking on some water. Hmm? And he changes the natural gravitational forces. So that the liquid becomes a solid. Oh, Jesus. The, the, the liquid becomes a solid and he's able to walk on it. So I don't know about you and I don't know what you're going through. But somebody in here needs to say, God, come in. Come into my situation. Come into my difficulty and change the natural consequences. My family is falling apart. God, come in. Now, if the truth be told, it's all about God. It's never ever about you oh my god <laughs> if one were to look at the scriptures with over 5230 verses there's one central verse <laughs> everything else wraps around that central verse let me tell you something about God. God being God and being the intellect that he is, the omniscient that he is, it's amazing how God is different than us. We try to impress each other with our intellectuality. <laughs> God, on the other hand, and, and so we try to act deep and profound. God works the opposite way. He, the profound one, tries to make it simple. Mm. Because he recognizes that the human being, regardless of their background and educational status, the human being is not able to retain the profound. Are you hearing me? You may be able to understand the profound, but unless you're constantly dealing with the profound, you don't retain it. So, for example, I went to school. I was a halfway decent student. I took calculus. One and two. I took physics. I, complex. I don't remember nothing. But I remember two plus two equals four. Because we retain the simple. And we forget the complex. But oftentimes we are trying to impress each other. Because you're surely not impressing God. Oh! So God takes all of this stuff, all this Bible stuff, all this Ellen White stuff, all this stuff, and he boils it down into one little verse, John 3, 16. For God, for God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. All the prophecies, my God, all the doctrines, everything you do boils down to God so loving you. Now, I'm so glad he's God. Because imagine we did something to him. We broke the relationship. Now, if God is like me and you do me something wrong, now I'm just telling you the truth. I ain't Christian enough yet. I, 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 if God is like me and you do me something wrong, I am not, com I'm not coming to you. Are you hearing me? I may wave at you in church and give up, but you ain't coming to my house for dinner. You're not hearing me. You're not coming. But God is not like me. Despite all I've done against him, he comes after me. 
Don't look at me like I'm the only person. Because some of you are in here who are, there are people next to you who you don't talk to. Everybody acting all holy. There are folks in here who think they're better than other folks. And God comes after me. God is a reconciler. The Bible says that he draws me. He draws me to himself. Every circumstance that has occurred in your life, every obstacle, every situation that you face is all a part of the gravitational pull of God to himself. Are you hearing me? Everything that has occurred in your life and is occurring in your life is God's way of pulling you to himself. So I've got a son, see? And my son doesn't always do what's right, but it's God's way of pulling me to himself. Because it caused me to pray. Oh, you don't know. Oh, oh, it caused me to pray. If I had a perfect child, a perfect family, I wouldn't pray as much. But God put some people in your life to get you to pray. God is pulling you to himself. I don't know why we try to see, think that we can impress God. You know, you can't impress God. You can impress other people. Just because you can sing a little bit or preach a little bit or pray a little bit, you're only impressing other creatures. You're not imp Not even the angels impress God, much less you. So what is their vir what virtue is there in creatures impressing other creatures? Manados! Hey! You might be pretty dust, but you're still dust! Educated dust, but you're still dust! Ugly dust, but you're still... My God, my God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this is critical because since the relationship and the reconciliation is not initiated by me, but initiated by God, then the initiator takes the responsibility. The initiator has to take responsibility for the outcome. And since the initiator is God, and God can't fail, and God never, never, ever, ever starts anything that he can't finish. If he has started a good work in you, he will perform it until, until. God initiates, God starts, and God will finish. The devil is a liar. It's not about him. It's not about you. It's about God. He alone is able. Are you hearing me? He takes responsibility for saving us. He takes responsibility for keeping us. He takes responsibility for preserving us and ultimately delivering us. Did you get anything so far? Put your hands together and give God a praise. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Oh, you don't understand. I'm done. 
I'm done not because I don't have more that I could say, but I'm done because I'm tired. I'm tired running up and down this place. Look at your neighbor and say, he's able. He alone is able. The government, you can start playing a little something, something. The government calls your taxpayer. The bank calls you a depositor. The airline calls you a passenger. The teacher calls you a student. The retailer calls you a consumer. The church, well, <laughs> y'all, y'all pray for me. <laughs> the church, when they call. <laughs> will call your member. But Jesus. But Jesus. But Jesus calls you mine. Mine in the morning. Mine in the noonday. Mine in the summertime. In the winter time. On the mountain. In the valley. You're mine. Mine because I left glory for you. Mine because I died on Calvary for you. You're mine. Mine, mine, mine. Jesus, Jesus is mine. Mine in the way. Oh, yes. Mine when. Oh, yes. Now, mine, mine. Jesus is. Jesus is. Jesus, is mine. Jesus alone. Jesus alone is mine. All right. You're just getting warmed up. One more time. Mine, mine. Oh yes now Jesus, Jesus is mine 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 when put your hands together praise God in the house mine 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 Jesus Jesus alone I feel me I feel me I feel me I feel me oh yes now oh yes now Jesus Jesus alone. I feel you. I feel you. Hey. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I wish I had some folks who know. Oh yes, now. When we all. When we Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I serve a God who is able. I just tell you one one last thing I know I said I was done but you know how preachers say when they're done they're never really done you know I'm wrapping up now <laughs> but this is a critical piece what the scripture says when it says God so loved the world fundamentally hinged in that is an awareness of the fact that God's love is independent of me. You got to hear me. It is human to love more. It is human to love less. But God doesn't love more or less. Nothing you do makes him love you less. And nothing you do makes him love you more. This is not about you. It's not about your faithfulness. It's about God. And God is love. Whether you're faithful or not. My goodness. He loves. Somebody just put your hands together for God who loves. Is love is love is he's the only being that is always is oh, 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 oh because anything that is as soon as it becomes is now is was you catch that tomorrow anything that is as soon as it is becomes was but not God God always is there is no was with the is and God is is now if you're here today and you haven't yet experienced the love of God in your life and in your heart and you want today to say Lord I don't know what it all means and I, I don't know where you're going to lead me and I, I don't know where this whole thing is going to go but, but Lord I'm glad to know that you love me in spite of me despite me and I want to say today God of love, take me. If you're here today and you want to say that, just slip out of your seat. Come down and join the pastoral staff here. Just say, Lord, take me. Take me! I'm yours. Slip out of your seat and come. There is enough love in God for you. Just come. Just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed. Oh, my Lord, and that thou... Oh, come out of your seat. Come on down, whether you're on the balcony, in the back, it doesn't matter. Just come on up front here. Come and join the pastoral staff as they pray. Of God, I come. Come on down. I, just as I am and waiting not, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul in my my 
soul a crop from one dark to thee whose blood oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes as I am, thou wilt receive. Sing it. Just as I am, thou wilt will welcome the grace because of the promise you to, to pray for the folks who have come forward. But as much as we acknowledge those who have come forward, we're cognizant of the fact that there are many who have not, who need to come forward. And if for whatever reason you feel implanted where you're sitting or standing, we pray that the Holy Ghost will so stir in your location right now. That there will be such a turbulence under your feet that you'll have to move. I come. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Now is the acceptable time. Oh, now is the day of salvation come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your children. They have stepped away from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Oh, Lord, send angels to be by them. Send angels to protect them, to keep them in the straight and narrow way that leads to life everlasting. Oh, there may be those who are struggling in this congregation. They did not have the courage to step out, but Lord, you're a mind reader. I ask, Lord, you will just reach out now and touch somebody, someone who is struggling. Help them to leave the kingdom of darkness for the kingdom of light. Bless your children today. Surround them, Lord, with your angels and keep them in the circle of your love. Come soon, Lord. Take us home to live with you forever. We ask in Jesus' precious name.